So there's a certain phenomenon that I've noticed a lot of people doing who I guess are new into the tech industry or maybe they don't even work in the tech industry at all. They're probably doing this to eventually get a job as a software developer or something like that. And this is padding their commits on their GitHub. So what do I mean by this? Uh, when you look at GitHub, on kind of like the high level view, when you first look at somebody's profile, you've got that area where it shows you how many commits they've made and their commit history. So it basically fills them in with green blocks every day that you've made a commit and then they're a darker color of green uh, showing days that you've done more and more commits on them. And for some reason, there's a lot of people that have this idea in their head that that whole area has to be green, that there has to be a whole bunch of commits on their under their profile in order for it to look good to an employer and so what a lot of people will do is they'll start just committing random stuff to their github stuff that doesn't even really matter just so that they can get those little green blocks and i don't know who gave them this idea but that is not a good way to get a job into the tech industry right maybe years ago it was back when most of the people who you would be interviewing with and who you would actually be working for like the person who would actually be your manager or your boss back when they were ignorant and they didn't really know what good code was or they didn't really understand what the software developers did they were just these people that made the computers do the thing maybe back during like right after the dot-com bubble that might have been a good way to do things but these days most managers and most bosses in the software development field have some idea of what they're doing, right? These days, a lot of them used to be in the same position that you were, right? Not padding their resume on GitHub, but working as an entry-level software developer, and then they worked up the ranks. So the days of having a manager or a boss who doesn't understand loops, who doesn't understand recursion or functions is pretty much gone, all right? Now it does exist in some areas, right? Because this field is huge and you know there's tons of startups that are constantly starting. And so you'll have some cases where there's ignorant bosses, ignorant managers that have no idea what to look for. and anybody can basically blow smoke up their ass if they've got the charisma and they've got the confidence to pretend like they're this rock star developer but the thing about those guys is that their startups usually end up failing okay if you don't understand what you're doing especially if you're a boss or if you're an executive because at that level your job is to basically make sure that your employees are productive and profitable right but if you don't understand what it is that they do how exactly are you going to make sure that they are productive and profitable you're going to get a lot of people who can just talk of the talk but don't really walk the walk but you don't know how to walk the walk either so how do you know if they're walking wrong right and then those startups they just fail so if you do manage to get passed into a job from pretending like you're a developer on GitHub and you're just committing nonsense to your profile, you're not going to like that job anyway, and it's going to be short-lived because the company is most likely going to end up failing. So the types of commits that I see people doing, one of the biggest ones is that they will start committing or they'll start uh, producing branches of uh, like tutorial stuff right they'll create these tutorial repos where it's like intro to python or it's um the they'll get like a workbook at a library of python or Perl or something like that and then they'll basically do the lessons from that workbook on their github and they'll pretend like it's theirs so a big problem with this is it's kind of plagiarism to a certain extent right if you're pretending like this is some project that you did and it's just an example that you got out of a textbook it's really not going to be that hard for me to figure that out right if i'm the one who's looking at your github i'm the one who's considering employing you it's really easy to see that you just plagiarize this thing and that's way worse than not having anything on your github it might, it's probably even worse than not having a github at all right having a github is important but if you're plagiarizing code and trying to take other people's projects and pretend like it's your own that's going to look really bad on you another thing that looks really bad and people who are padding their github are probably doing this uh probably padding their resumes as well now what i mean by this is 
uh, say that you have some experience with, uh, I don't know, Java. Okay, so maybe you have one year of real Java experience, but you say on your resume that you have five years of experience because that's what so many different job postings are asking for. Well, here's the problem. If you say on your PDF resume that you send in to me that you have one year or that you have five years of Java experience, but then I'm looking at your GitHub and I see that you just six months ago were working on intro to Java stuff, that's gonna make me wonder, right? That's gonna be a bit of a head scratcher. Hmm, why does this guy say that he has five years of Java experience when he was just doing an intro to Java, you know, intro to Java work uh, just six months ago, right? Obviously this guy's lying, he doesn't have the real experience, and then again, you're not going to get through into the interview, all right? Another thing that a lot of people do is they'll just commit like the same things or they'll just commit like line by line onto their GitHub to again have dozens of commits that they can have that dark green onto their little squares on GitHub and try to make it look good. Uh, it really doesn't look good because here's the thing. Unless your boss is ignorant, unless your manager is ignorant, they're probably not super impressed with lines of code. Right? They're probably not impressed with numbers of commits. What they're going to be impressed with, really, if they actually know what they're doing, is how few lines of code does it take for, in order for you to make something work? Because if you actually work in this industry, if you actually understand how software works and software development works, you generally want to go for minimalism. All right, It's not just a meme. Okay, Some people do take it to meme levels, but Anytime that you have lines and lines of code, the more code that you have that does a thing, the more likely it is that there's going to be bugs. Like there's different um, formulas that people have come up with. I think uh, I'm just kind of making these numbers up, but I think it's something like every 1000 lines of code on average contains about 20 bugs, right? So you want to keep your lines of code as minimal as possible to one, eliminate bugs, uh, two, if the code starts to become legacy, because this is another thing that happens in the industry where, you're, where you'll have one person that produces a piece of software and then that person leaves the company and then somebody else has to come in to maintain it. Well, if it's very bloated, it becomes harder to maintain that. It becomes harder to go on and fix bugs. And again, like I said, there's going to be more bugs that exist. And then three, if you're able to do a thing with fewer lines of code, that just shows that you have a more significant understanding of whichever language it is that you're coding in. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with writing when you think about it. So if you're a poet or if you're, well, I guess not really poet is not a good example. Uh, if you're writing books, okay, if you're writing stories, if you're writing essays, anything like that, and you're able to uh, say something that's descriptive and it's descriptive enough in a shorter sentence or a shorter paragraph, that's going to be better than a run-on sentence or a run-on paragraph, okay? If you have to go on and on and on to make your point, then it doesn't show as good of an understanding of the thing you're making a point about versus somebody who is able to just do it in a couple of sentences. So uh, it's good to have a GitHub, okay? That's important to getting a job in this industry, but you don't wanna fill your GitHub with a bunch of nonsense. So don't just make unnecessary commits to it. It's okay if you don't commit something for a day, for a week, or even for a month, all right? Just commit things that actually matter. Produce repositories that actually matter. Don't just copy some you know, random tutorial repo onto yours just to make it look like you have a bunch of projects going on. Uh, and most importantly, don't plagiarize because you're going to be found out. Don't just copy and paste somebody else's code. Right, search engines are really good at figuring out if you did something like that.